The rain screams down from the heavens, as once more the Dark Knight and the Clown Prince of Crime stare each other down on the Gotham City rooftops. Give up, Joker, you'll never win, Batman rumbles over the sound of the downpour. It's over. Joker's eyes sparkle with insane glee as he grins back at his arch nemesis. Oh, Batman, my oldest friend, how long have we been playing my little games? You should realize by now that nobody wins. The fun is in the playing, Batman snaps at his old foe's same old tricks. Enough, he roars as he lunges at the Joker. Smoothly, the clown sidesteps Batman's dive. Too slow, old man, the Joker quips as Batman sails by. But unexpectedly, Batman's feet never find their footing on the slick rooftop. He flies forward, landing hard with a sickening smack on his face. Joker cackles. That looked like it hurt. You need shoes with better traction. To the Joker's surprise, Batman still hasn't moved. A blood-red stain begins spreading from underneath the bat's cowl. Joker and his cronies watch confused as Batman slowly and unceremoniously slips further towards the building's edge. Um, Joker says, unsure of how to respond to the frankly bizarre state of affairs that has unfolded. Is he going to... Joker asks. But as Batman slips over the edge and begins plummeting limp down to the streets below, the clown's question is answered. For the first time in his life, Joker is speechless. He stares dumbfounded over the edge of the rooftop at where his most cunning and brilliant foe had just completely eaten it and fallen to his certain death. Frantically, Joker turns to his henchmen. Did we do something to the roof to make it more slippery or something? Joker asks. No, boss, his goon replies. It's just the rain, I think. Joker and his cronies lean over the side of the building. I don't get it. Is this some kind of trick? One of his goons asks. What kind of trick could this be? Joker demands angrily. I don't know. Joker is silent for a moment. Then we should check on him, right? Otherwise, we're just standing around on a roof like a bunch of clowns. Together, Joker and his two henchmen make their way down to the alleyway to investigate. When they reach the street, Batman's blood has already begun mixing with the trash and rainwater. You should poke him, boss. One of the clown's goons says, breaking the tense silence that had come over Joker's crew. You poke him, Joker snaps back. That's what I pay you for to do things like that. The goon leans down and very tentatively puts a hand to the mangled body of Batman. Well, I'm poking him, boss. Now what? Maybe he's unconscious, Joker offers at a loss. Turn him over, right? That's what you're supposed to do? Joker, for all his years of violence, never bothered to learn the help of a victim. The goon pushes Batman over, and immediately the sight of him causes Joker's other henchmen to vomit. So, not unconscious, Joker reasons, his hands holding his face in complete and utter shock. Batman's lifeless body lies sprawled out on the street, with three panicked clowns standing above him completely unsure as to their next moves. Did we just kill Batman? One of the goons asks, an edge of excitement starting to creep into his voice. I mean, he just sort of tripped, the other henchman responds. But he tripped because of us, right? The two men look at Joker for orders. But the madman has deteriorated into a crazed, frenzied laughter. What do we do now, boss? And people are going to be real mad, right? Joker shakes himself out of it, desperately trying to focus on the moment at hand. Right, yes, he said. We should probably leave, I guess. Are we finishing the heist? His right hand asked. Oh, the heist. Joker thought for a moment, weighing the pros and cons. No, no point now, right? Do we just leave him here? Any excitement in his hired muscles voices had died out, replaced by disbelief and apprehension. Throw him in the trunk, Joker ordered, finally starting to get a handle on the situation. Uh, we took the train here, he was reminded, which drove the clown over the edge. Then go steal a car, Joker roared. We should plan our next move. Maybe we should kill Superman next, Joker's henchman offered. The three clowns were sitting in a quiet, empty diner, enjoying some refreshments, Beside them, the twisted corpse of Batman still bled through his torn and bruised costume. Joker chuckled at his goon's suggestion. What? He's gonna be mad when he finds out you killed his best friend, right? Joker looked up from his plate, anger and derision flashing in his eyes. Yes, but how are we supposed to kill Superman? He demanded. Well, I don't know. His hired help responded meekly. We killed Batman, didn't we? Did we? Joker exploded. Or did he just fall off a roof and die? like a silence fell over the motley crew. Okay, okay, one of the goons offered. We have to do something though, right? Well, we're a criminal organization still, and we have some good momentum going. Can we kill Green Arrow? Joker's eyes lazily floated past his hired help and off into the distance. His boredom was already noticeably sinking in. 
Yeah, I guess we could kill him, whatever. Well, it doesn't have to be that, boss, his henchman said, sensing his boss's apathy. But let's do something fun. Fine, Joker caved. All around the three criminals, the dead bodies of diner goers littered the establishment. But with no one to stop the Joker from killing indiscriminately, he was free to murder without consequences. Two days later, Joker and his cronies are aboard a tanker anchored in Gotham Bay. Please just let me and my men go, the captain begged. That depends on how you answer these next questions, Captain. And Joker laughed at the begging man. What are you transporting? Unrefined uranium ore. The captain did not hesitate. Where is it? The captain did not hesitate. It's in the hold. It's not locked. That's it? Joker asked, incredulous and more than a little disappointed. No alarms, no booby traps, no secret paramilitary security team waiting to ambush us? Joker said with a glimmer of hope in his tone. No, I swear, the captain answered truthfully. Joker stopped marching forward and looked at the captain with genuine surprise painted across his face. What, seriously? We can just take it now? Yes, the man said. Joker sighed with apathy as he plunged his sword through the captain's chest without mercy. The man crumpled to the floor as Joker pulled his sword from the captain's chest cavity. I told you my guy Armstrong had a good tip, boss, a goon offered, clearly believing the lack of safety protocols was a clear victory. But Joker's twisted mind had other priorities. Let's just get the plutonium. But the same henchman cut in to correct him. Uranium. Joker pulled his hair in annoyance and disappointment. Plutonium, uranium, who cares? He let out in a huff, storming off onto the deck of the ship. Just get it off the boat, he ordered his cronies. I guess we'll make a bomb or something. Weeks later, a disheveled and unshaven Joker crew has dwindled to only one remaining employee. No big plans today, boss? His only remaining goon asks, hoping for any hint of inspiration from the once esteemed ace of knaves. I was thinking I'd finish watching Real Housewives of Metropolis today, Joker told him drearily. You finished that yesterday, the goon said, clearly disappointed. Then I guess I'll start a rewatch, Joker shot back lazily. His employee held up the day's newspaper. Crime wave hits Gotham. Where is Batman? The front page reads in thick, bold prints. We did it! and everyone else is getting rich while we do nothing. The goon desperately tried to jolt his boss back into his usual megalomania. This is what you worked for all your life, boss. Joker kept his eyes down and on his cereal. While his pupils usually contained a wild, rabbit energy, recently Joker's eyes had been bleak and lifeless, a shadow of his former self. So what am I supposed to do now? He asked his henchman. You can do whatever you want, the man replied. Joker took a moment to respond. Then I want to rewatch Real Housewives. At that, his final remaining employee stormed off in anger. This isn't what I signed up for, the man yelled out, enraged by his employer's clear indifference. I could be henching for the Mad Hatter right now. Joker was left alone to his own devices, which suited him just fine. As he glanced down at the shuffled newspaper pages, one fell into his lap. Jobs, it read. Joker, at a loss for his next move and feeling completely devoid of his usual sick, twisted inspiration, applied for a job at Wayne Enterprises. As his interviewer told him, Wayne Enterprises is a power player in almost every field of tech and industry. Our sphere of influence touches every living soul on the planet. It's tireless work, but it's worth it. Then, looking across the table at the Joker, the boss said, You seem like the dream candidate for the job. Welcome aboard, Mr. Kaiser. The Joker, sporting thick-rimmed glasses and with hair slicked back so as to be unrecognizable, said, Thank you so much, Mr. D. I can't wait to join a team. I think it will give me the real sense of purpose my life has been missing. Sitting at his new desk, Joker got down to business immediately. Where is all the money? He typed into the data search bar. His security clearance prevented him from seeing any results. Secret weapons projects, he tried again. No results were unveiled. When his superior strutted over to introduce herself, Joker tried to get to the bottom of his faulty mainframe. My computer is broken, he reported to Helen, his overseer. Oh no, what's wrong? She asked. I can't access the money or any of the secret files I need access to. Weapons blueprints or lists of people we bribe? Helen burst into laughter, assuming the Joker's alarming confessions were simply well-man jokes. After a long and arduous conversation, Helen finally managed to sit Joker down and explain to him what his position within Wayne Enterprises entailed. The office he'd been hired at was just about as low as the corporate ladder extended. It seems, 
and to the Joker's dismay, he was worlds away from being able to access sensitive information of any kind. What is our office even called? He asked, exasperated and bewildered. Well, um, we don't have a name, I guess, but we're very important. I get it, Joker said, dismayed with a corporate accounting seatbelt. Helen happily corrected him. No, she said cheerily. We're more like a device that makes sure the seatbelt doesn't get damaged. A seatbelt protector. Joker's eye twitched at her words, and something inside him almost snapped as she leaned into his desktop to help him sign in. Joker reached into his jacket, removed a knife, and held it over his head, nearly bringing it down on his new boss on his very first day. But suddenly, Joker thought better of blowing his cover so soon and stashed the knife away as Helen rose from the computer and walked away through the labyrinth of cubicles. Weeks passed, and Joker, against all expectations, grew to truly enjoy the routine and benefits his Wayne Enterprises job provided. One morning, as he brewed his morning coffee in the break room, one of the higher-ups asked to have a word with their newest employee. Is everything all right, Griffin? Joker asked, genuinely concerned. It wasn't my joke, was it? It's not your jokes, Johan, Griffin told him, casting a stern look in Joker's direction. Everyone enjoys those well enough. As a matter of fact, looking over your end-of-month reports, are my numbers off? Joker's boss turned the charts around revealing crude drawings and childlike doodles all over the official material. Your numbers aren't just off, but some of these aren't even numbers, his boss scolded him. What is this graph supposed to be? The data is complicated, Joker argued in his defense. At this point, Griffin continued growing angrier and angrier. I have to ask, do you even know what you're doing? Because this work shows no indication that you have any idea how to even use... But the boss was interrupted abruptly when Joker smashed a microwave oven over the man's head. The bottom of the machine smashed open over Griffin's skull, leaving him blind and nearly mute. Joker's boss stumbled and struggled to right himself after such a concussive blow. He who asked too many questions, Griffin, Joker said, his voice regaining some of its iconic hateful zeal as he spoke. He punched some buttons on the face of the microwave, and the machine whirred to life. Stuck inside Griffin's head bloated and expanded as the radiation consumed his face and brain. The man screamed, though the sound of his voice couldn't be heard as his windpipe was blocked by his swollen head. Is everything okay? Helen asked Joker, as he nonchalantly exited the break room. I heard a big noise. Yes, fine, Joker assured her. I just remembered I left something in the oven, going to take the rest of the day off. The next day, Joker walked inconspicuously clad in an oversized overcoat. Morning, Johan, he was greeted at the door. Not now, Helen, Joker annoyedly waved her off. Wasting no time, Joker climbed up on his desk, standing above his fellow employees as he began to give a momentous speech. He held what looked like a clear detonation device in one hand. Listen up, you groveling worms. You are cogs in the machine that seeks to destroy you. You are bootleggers of a capitalist state that seeks only to exert control over you. You do nothing, you serve no purpose. But right in the middle of Joker's monologue, his hiring manager, Mr. D, approached. Johan, can I see you in my office? he asked. I'm sort of in the middle of something here, Mr. D, Joker said, launching back into his soliloquy. Your own families will not mourn your deaths, he continued. But the moment had passed. The energy had been sucked from his words. Is that it? Mr. D asked respectfully. I guess, yeah, Joker conceded and followed his boss into his corner office. Close the door and take a seat, Johan, Mr. D told Joker as they both entered the privacy of his office. We have to have a slightly unpleasant talk, I'm afraid. Given the fact that Joker had openly murdered a co-worker the day earlier, he was pretty sure he had a handle on what Mr. D wanted to talk to him about. As Mr. D strolled about his office, not paying much attention to Joker, the ace of knaves removed a gas mask from his briefcase and pulled it down over his head. Joker likewise wasn't paying much attention to Mr. D, and by the time he pulled his trench coat aside to reveal the gas canister strapped to his chest, he heard Mr. D's final sentence. I believe he took his own life. Joker was so perplexed he hesitated, bringing his thumb down on the detonator. He what? Joker said, astonished. Mr. D exclaimed, seeing Joker get up. What they say about you is true. You are a real jokester. But let's be serious. You're a real rising star here. Bruce Wayne himself took a shine to you. With Griffin dead, I need someone who isn't afraid to dedicate his whole life to this job. 
Joker slowly lifted the gas mask over his head as Mr. D kept talking. I want you to take his position as regional management assistant vice supervisor. Are you sure about this? Joker said, bewildered. Mr. D assured him that he was, in fact, sure. Joker gleefully accepted the promotion. All thoughts of gassing his co-workers had flown from his head. A few weeks later, Joker was running his own corporate meetings. He was the boss now, rather than the newcomer, and a whole boardroom of employees were at his beck and call. After hours one night, at a local dive bar, Joker had gone for drinks with some of his employees. Who will drink with me? He asked the room, clearly already drunk. Drink with your boss, Helen, Joker droned on, annoying all those in the room. Eventually, Joker drove all his employees out of the bar with his drunken stupor. Don't want to drink with me, he said as he stormed out. That's fine. I was going to poison you anyway. But as he walked into the street, two shadowy figures were waiting for him. Merrily, Joker began to stroll home, but his old supervillain sixth sense for danger alerted him that he was being followed. Joker began to pick up his pace, hoping to lose the two men tailing him. His stroll turned into an all-out sprint as his followers began chasing him in earnest. Nobody can outrun Johann Kaiser, Joker yelled into the night as he turned a corner. But to his surprise, as he turned into the nearest alleyway, his face was met with the brutal swing of a baseball bat. Within moments, his muggers were kicking and beating him as he lay helpless on the ground. His old life escaped him. You all just made a very big decision in your lives. Very Joker managed to take hold of the man's head, driving his thumbs into his attacker's eye holes. You see what I mean? Joker yelled before he was torn off the man and held still. Gotham is my town! Joker raved, the adrenaline in his system bringing back some of the old, crazed clowning in him. You're just bloody tourists. I make the rivers run. I make the sun go down. You don't know who you just crossed paths with, but you will, one of the muggers said as they revealed themselves from the darkened alley. Is that you, boss? The man said, catching sight of the Joker. Gaggy, Joker said, greeting his old henchman like an old friend. I see you've branched out into new, more pathetic ventures. Gaggy was surprised to see his old boss, who had all but disappeared from the criminal underworld for months. With the rumors Batman was back, we was worried he came for you, Gaggy started to say, but Joker wasn't listening. Don't make up lies, Gaggy. It's unbecoming of someone of your stature. Well, where have you been, boss? His old employee asked. I've been working, Gaggy. Having been released by the muggers, Joker didn't even give his old crew a second look as he started walking off into the night once more. Find something that gives you a purpose, Gaggy, the clown said as he walked away. You can't sit around forever, waiting for a man in a bat costume to assault you. What kind of life is that? The next day, Joker proudly showed off his scars and bruises to his co-workers, joking around as they asked where he'd received such a beating. Where is Batman when you need him? One of his employees asked. His corpse is in my closet at home, Joker said, causing a roar of laughter to erupt from the break room. Another co-worker offered that his wife had also been mugged recently, sympathizing with Joker's condition. Is Cynthia all right? Joker asked. But she's fine. Batman even got her purse back, the man said. Hearing this, Joker spit up his coffee all across the floor. He instantly got up, close and personal with the man. She saw him? He interrogated. Yeah, yeah. Joker soaked away, unsure of how to digest this strange new information. That night, Joker walked home, his usual route. He looked up to see the bat symbol shining in the night sky. He walked into his high-end apartment, as he did every night, hanging up his coat in the closet, kicking off his shoes. Joker sat on his reclining chair, absent-mindedly listening to the news. What channel is Real Housewives on again? Joker wondered aloud. The rotting, decrepit corpse of Batman hung by one of the hooks in his closet, 